early morning at La Garrigue, the new home of the Burton Race family in southwest France. Morning, darling. And newspaper. It's been a bumpy ride since he quit his job in London and brought them all here four weeks ago. They'll stay for a year, it's all his idea, and he's the only one who's taken to it like a duck to water. When I first arrived, day one, I was scared because I was thinking about, you know, is it going to go right? Are the kids going to hate me? Will Kim want to divorce me? Mm -hmm. Nicely. And I had a moment where, or well, maybe more than a moment, where I was scared. Get away, you big fat haste. I'm just having a dream. I'm just having a dream. Hello, you can't be this manic in the morning, Charlie. John hardly used to see his children as he worked such long hours as one of England's top chefs. Now he wakes them each morning. Eve, Olivia, Martha, come on, we're late. Get up, hello. They're a lot happier than when they first arrived. But put all six in a house with one bathroom, and there's bound to be a battle. No, it's hey! It would help tremendously to have a second bathroom in this house. You know, it is difficult with eight people trying to get out and ready in the morning. We've even talked about having some sort of rotor because it's just impossible. It's 200 years old, crumbling, old farmhouse. When I came out here, I was in heaven because it already felt like a family home. It doesn't matter if the kids make a mess on the floor because the floor's cracked. Come on, Angel, quickly. I don't think I sat for about three nights when we first arrived because, uh, you know, mice running up and down and, oh, it was terrible, really, really horrible. John and Charles, Amelia and Eliza would go on a mouse hunt every half an hour and the frightening thing was they caught about 20 in one day. I've seen them running up and down the curtains and what you end up doing is, like, you have to keep moving in the bed so they know that there's people here. Oh, God, it's horrible. After rejecting their original school, the children are all much happier at new ones. Martha and Olivia go to a secondary in Revel. John takes the three young ones to the local primary in the village of Montferrand. But who's your best friend? Best. Your bestest, bestest. No. Who is it? I haven't got a best friend. I said, look, all I want out of you lot is to speak French. Go on, learn a bit of French, meet some new people and some new friends, take the blinkers off and just jump in there. What you'll gain from this year will make up for anything that you've lost. Well, if you don't like him, then why do you spend so much time talking about yeah, him? Yeah, she always talks about him. Libya and Martha are doing brilliantly well. I mean, they've got boyfriends, or they haven't got boyfriends, or they have got boyfriends, or it's him, or it's him, or it's... They change their mind from week to week. But where they were when we first came here to where they are now, it's unbelievable. Oh, I love his expression. Oh, Martha, what, did, what was his expressions before? Thank you, John. With the family more settled, John's free to explore the cuisine of the Southwest. Where better to start than the speciality of the region, the pride of the Languedoc, cassoulet. A staple dish for centuries, it's usually full of beans, duck fat and pork. John wants to learn how the locals make it. According to legend, it's only grandmas that can make the best cassoulet, and it's only the old ones that can make it. So I found myself a grandma, Madame Bondui, and she's going to teach me how to make the best cassoulet. We'll have to wait and see. Up here. Vous voulez ça maintenant? No. Very, very complicated bean stew, this one. You've got pork bones, you've got pork sausages, you've got chickling sausage, we've got tomatoes, we've got shallots, we've got garlic, heaps of salt and pepper, and lashings of duck grease. And we haven't even started. It's very difficult, you know, when you're relegated from head chef of a two-star Michelin restaurant to the hired help of a grandma in Castle Nordry. But never mind, she's the, she's the expert. What do I know about bean stew anyway? C'est ça, non? Bien bon? C'est ça. Ham ça, and... C'est quoi, là? Ça, c'est des coineux. Pork rind and... Et ça, c'est des pieds de cochon. Pig's feet. Voilà. She said you've got to take the nails off the pig's feet before you put it into the pan. Bon, madame, c'est fini? C'est fini. Allez me chercher la cassole. Allez, dépêchez-vous. Please. What, what is she on? Allez! <laughs> what a slave driver. 
Okay, so this is it. It's finished, except, of course, it's two more hours cooking in the oven. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, it, you've got to push down the crust five times. <coughs> and it weighs a ton. Bon, voilà. c'est fini. C'est fini. Merci, madame. Alors, avez... <laughs> il allait m'embrasser sur la bouche. At school, Martha and Olivia are learning fast. I'm starting to understand a lot more now. I'm not sure about you, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand some of the time. It's just I was concentrating on other things. At Madame Bonduis, John's learning just how much fat there is in an old style cassoulet. A bit plus? No, 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 ça va, ça va. Ça va, c'est bon. Oh, non, c'est bon, mais ça, ça va. C'est le meilleur. Santé le chef. À la porte. Feeling distinctly fatter, John heads home to cook for the family, something he never had time to do as a stressed out chef in England. But some old habits die hard. I wish we could be there. I know. To John's dismay, Kim's had satellite telly installed so the children don't get too homesick. No, I'm. Um determined we will all sit down and eat our meals all of us the family um it's it's a shame though you know even in my fridge in france already it started to happen look liquid squirty yogurt things and processed cheese i mean france is the the home of the best cheese in the world there's 50 different cheeses i can buy down the road in a, in a supermarket never mind in the in the farm shops i mean no this has got to stop. It's got to change. I, I want them off the floor in front of EastEnders and at the dinner table enjoying a great family meal cooked by Dad. You see, I like my dad's food. Yeah, and it was nice. And I like eating my dad's food. But I don't like listening to my dad saying that he cooks every oh, yeah. meal in the house. And you cook this, and I cook this, and I cook this, and I turned into a nanny. <laughs> this is duck a la orange. It's quite a nice recipe because it's one of those where you can roast the duck, they take about 45 minutes, um, pull them out and leave them on the board and go back and finish the sauce whenever you like or whenever you've got a minute. He cooks every day. Yeah. And I don't want to moan and when we do moan he gets upset. And he was spending ages on that. So, thinking about big it. big proud face on, yeah, this is the duck. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> it's probably a very good dish to start with, especially when it's... We're as far as the kids are concerned because, you know, the oranges, the sauce, it's quite sweet. And so it should suit their palate, which up to now has been ruined by junk food. No eyebrows. You've got to be very careful when you're doing this. About 150 um, mils of uh, cider vinegar. It's a sweet and sour effect. So you've Got the ground money in there, a bit of sugar, and now some cider vinegar. My, my kids are a um, tough lot to please, and that too is hard to deal with, you know. I'm a bloke who used to uh, win awards. People know me. I can cook. The ducks are just done. Cooked, but still a little bit pink. I'm just putting it back into the sauce to glaze the skin so it's nice and sweet and sour and sticky. Now, where would you like Charles. to sit? Who's sitting here? Liza. Liza, leg or breast? Liza. Liza. John awaits the verdict of his young food critics. I'll just cut a bit of it and then. Here you go, Charles. No, makes me feel sick. Is it too fruity? Yeah. Just try the duck, just try it. It's too. I haven't got any lemons on the duck. A mixed reception for the duck à l'orange, but the cook's got something else on his mind. Now, when I said we were coming to France, I'd have to give up the restaurant. Do you remember that, Livia? And giving up the restaurant meant that I wouldn't have the money that I used to earn, and that we'd have to be a little bit more careful. Well then, <clears throat> I need some help, girls, because in here is a telephone bill. 
Can you help me, Olivia, when I tell you there's 923 telephone calls to mobile phones in England? £850. How many phone calls do you think you made? Ten. Ten phone calls in all. Yeah, and how many to a mobile telephone? Yeah. Right, let's move on then. Martha? Quite a lot to Catherine, but not as How many quite a lot? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten. Ten phone calls. Mm -hmm. How long were you on the telephone for? Maybe 20 minutes each time. 20 minutes each time. Charles, have you phoned anybody? No. Are you sure? I don't even know how to do a number. And what about you? Um, well, I've talked to... No. OK. Right, thank you, Eliza. Amelia? I didn't use the telephone. Are you sure? Watch this, Eve. I don't know. Dad, she only... I see her ringing when you go out. <laughs> oh, it's all coming out now, isn't it? Oh, good. How can you phone a mobile phone 923 times in a month? How can you do that? Because it's my boyfriend. Is that what She's it not is? going out with him anymore. I am going to withdraw that money until some of this is paid Thanks. back. End of story. Okay. Good. I hope you all enjoyed your dinner. I haven't since I've heard all that nonsense. Next day, John's on the road to the weekly market ten miles away in Ravel. A cook's treasure trove, it sums up much of what's special about the region, inspiring John to start a book on the food of the Languedoc. Coming out here, my first impressions are that they've got it made. Everything in France is so good, the ingredients are just fantastic. I think what they do is they chuck out all their rubbish and send it to England and we all buy it with a big smile on our face. And they don't just talk about food, food's a way of life. Even when it comes to meat, the French stop at nothing to make sure they only eat the best. I think this is probably taking fresh ingredients a little bit too far. Let me have a look at it. I can't imagine taking this little fellow home and uh, chopping his head off. I think the kids would kill me. And these fellows here are a French eating variety of... Um... Comes up. He said that I should cut its throat and hang it upside down to catch the blood to make um, a coq au vin. While John gets back to food basics, Kim succumbs to a very French urban treat. Ever since we arrived in France, John has been on a huge economy drive. Just won't let you spend a penny on anything. Watching everything you do. When you bring bags in, where did that come from? How much did it cost? So, um, I just think every now and then you deserve a little treat. This is a, a fresh foie gras, um, a duck liver. And in England, the only way I could buy one of these was in a sealed plastic bag, but this is fresh, straight out of the duck. I know it's a bit controversial um, in England, but over here, it's a regional speciality thing, and they're very good at it, and I can assure you, it's bloody delicious. I mean, I don't mind being stuck on a hill 90% of the time, but I need a bit of salvation. So every now and then, I sneak in and have my nails done. And if he knew, he'd go mad. Determined to find out the secrets of how you make foie gras, John visits the farm of Serge Douy at the village of Peche Luna, one hour on from Revel. Great weather for ducks. Yes, it's a perfect day for... But how many times a day do you feed them? Oh, twice a day. Twice a day. To produce foie gras, Serge force feeds his ducks with so much maize, their livers end up around 10 times the normal size. 200 grams. So each cup is 200 grams? 400 grams. And maybe you can see, no, you can't. Oh, God. There is still a lot of room. <laughs> but you can actually feel the, the corn going in. Yeah. Why do we have to force feed these? I mean, ducks are greedy for things, aren't they? Yes. I mean, why couldn't you just put them out on the yard and throw buckets of sweet corn at them? It would take longer and the, the livers would be smaller. The children and I are really behind John and, you know, finding out about all his recipes. And it's great that he's cooking because, I mean, you know, it means I don't have to do it. And so it's great every evening he's at the stove 
but I tell you now, it's wearing a bit thin, all this duck. We are eating duck every single day. Duck with chips, ducks with potatoes, duck everything. John decides to run a mercy mission and buys four of Serge's ducks as family pets. Hello, new home. And it just gets to a point, if I see another duck, I'm going to go crazy. Have I got a surprise for you guys? Do you want to choose one, Charles? Which one's yours? Do you like the one with the black head? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, these are ducks. I had to, you know, I thought the kids would like them. Well, now the power owner red dogs out. and four ducks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any pets? Four ducks. Yeah. I'd like to call the one with the black head Cassoulet. Cassoulet? Yeah, let's call it Cassoulet. Cassoulet! Because if it doesn't behave itself, that's where it'll end up. No! <laughs> Get down, stroke one. Stroke, stroke it. No, just stroke one of them. Don't just stroke Cassoulet. Oh, look, their home comes. Cassoulet. Yeah. It's called Cassoulet because if it ends, ends it up, like, because that's where it'd be ending up if it's naughty. Cassoulet. Down, dipped. <laughs> now John faces his first big challenge from local French gourmands. Hearing of the top English chef living in their midst, they've invited him to cook them a cassoulet. They're very particular and John's only got himself to rely on. Every time I get a book out and read it and try and understand about a cassoulet, there's always something different. From what I can understand, they're all bonkers because it's basically a duck leg and bean casserole. With a long night ahead, John gets down to business, starting with the stock. Hi, Mum, how are you doing? Oh, I don't know, it's quite difficult. Today he's turned up and he's bought some ducks. What the hell are we going to do with ducks? But I mean, you know, oh, I don't know. I think he's had some sort of breakdown, some sort of midlife crisis. Yeah, my mother and I speak probably once a day, just, you know, to ask how I'm doing or what's going on in her life. And I dare tell John I've just had another phone bill in. I've hidden it in one of the girls' bags. Next morning, John takes a well-earned break to feed the ducks with Charles. Give me up. Do you like cleaning out the ducks? Uh, no, really, no. I haven't tried it anyway. Yeah, straight it up into the corner over there. <coughs> I wish there was a door. Yeah. What's that one called? Uh, Lucky Ducky. Lucky Eliza's. Ducky. <laughs> Eliza's. Lucky Get Ducky. Get in your water. Now don't put it in the water. They've got to drink that water. Ooh. The beans will boil for 90 minutes, but there's still a whole day's cooking ahead. Eve asks if she can help out. Yeah, you can actually. You can uh, <coughs> chop, crush me some uh, juniper berries. Together with other herbs, the juniper seasons the duck legs and pork belly. <laughs> Later, Olivia and Martha drop by for some junk food. Now, you see this? Processed cheese. Bin. Now, please, hot chocolate? No, no way. Why not? Because I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do a cassoulet. Yeah, you You've got no go idea. Go. Look, keep out of the fridge. Why? I'm hungry. Keep out of the fridge and take the bloody dog. What's the dog doing in here? She's out of the get... she's, she's a gun dog. She shouldn't even be in the house. Fendi, outside. Go and get a partridge. Don't listen, Fendi. That afternoon, Amelia just comes to watch. Yeah. They're Toulouse sausages. They're for the cassoulet. That's very yummy. The end is nigh. John sautés some vegetables, slices up all the meat, and puts it in the cassoulet, the cooking pot. Then covers the whole lot with beans. Good night from Charles and Eliza, as time runs out for John. Hey, listen, before you go, take some of this stuff off the oh, floor upstairs with you. We always have oh, to come on, just work. hurry up. I'm trying to cook and you're mucking up the kitchen. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Then I. <laughs> the whole thing's put in the oven. An hour and a half later, the cooking marathon is finally over. That doesn't look bad, does it? With the cassoulet on board, 
John heads off for his meeting with destiny. These people in orange robes with hats the shape of cooking pots belong to the Grand Order of the Cassoulet, headed by their very own Grand Master. They hold their gastronomic rituals around Castelnaudary, where they say the dish was invented. John Burton Reyes. Hello. Good night. How do you do? Good evening. By day, they hold down normal jobs, but by night, they're all secretly dedicated to preserving the glory of the cassoulet. And John is, well, a foreigner. John Lewis Porsche. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Don't worry, I have more. I have more. It's very, very good. When the cassoulet is served, there's an ominous silence. And don't say it's not bad, but. Or not bad because I'm English. Ah. No. Or right. something like that. Oui. Yeah. The harrow yeah. a little yeah. underdone. Yeah. 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 A little bit. Just, 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 yeah. For an English person. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The beans. Yeah. The beans. Yeah. For an English is a, is a great. Don't go there. It's a great thing. A <laughs> little bit more cooking. Good. That's all. That's right. Okay. I think they quite liked it. Someone said the beans were a little bit undercooked. Someone said I've got to wash the pot in cold water overnight before I use it. I think they're strange. And do I really want to walk around with a pot on my head and a cloak cross between Batman and Zorro? Look, it's only a bean stew. I've done the best I can. And it's a lot better than the stuff I eat. Monsieur John. A few minutes later, any shortcomings in John's offering are forgiven. D'abord, je tiens à vous féliciter. He's made a chevalier, or knight, of the Grand Order of the Cassoulet, and can wear a pot on his head whenever he likes. Thank you. In the next episode of French Leave, John's mother-in-law Patsy comes to stay. John goes baking. That's the biggest oven I've ever come across, I can tell you. Patsy gets into his kitchen. That's my domain. No one goes there. Pick him up, pick him up. She makes them all go to church. I need to go to church like a hole in the head. And gives the children junk food. But John fights back. Do you want to make your own? Yeah!